entering the theatre suite. Since there is often a lack of lockers in the theatre changing rooms, it is advisable not to take any valuables into theatre. Where possible, rings should be removed as the incidence of glove perforation is higher when they are present and there is an increased risk of skin reaction below rings due to the concentration of scrub solution. Ear rings may be left in place as long as they are contained under the theatre hat. The hair should be covered with a hat or hood and a set of theatre scrubs donned with the top tucked into the trousers. Few items, if any, should be kept in the pockets as they may injure patients during transfers. Appropriate footwear should be clean, well-fitting and provide protection from falling items. The use of overshoes should be discouraged as well as increasing the possibility of slipping on wet floors. They have been shown to increase the bacterial floor count and to increase hand contamination due to the handling of the overshoes during their removal. Theatre scrubs and shoes should never be worn outside the theatre area. If for any reason you leave the theatre, the scrubs must be changed on your return. Before entering the operating theatre, it is advisable to identify the door that leads into the scrub room as the other doors lead into the recovery, exit room and the anaesthetic room where procedures are often being undertaken. Pre-scrubbing In the scrub room, care should be taken to ensure all the hair is covered. The face mask is contoured over the nose to prevent steaming up of the eye protection. Masks and eye protection styles vary depending on the type of surgery being performed. If your own spectacles are worn, they should be well fitting and, if necessary, secured with tape. Should additional protection to the eyes from the side be required, this can be achieved by using a visor. Other types of personal protective equipment may be necessary, for example, lead coats and thyroid protection for cases using X-rays or specialist goggles for laser surgery. Prior to scrubbing, any small cuts or lesions should be covered with an occlusive waterproof plaster. Chipped nail varnish or false nails can harbour resistant strains of bacteria and must be avoided. The scrub room should have a mirror to check that all hair is covered and the eye protection and mask are correctly fitted. A selection of antiseptic lotions. Sterile scrubbing brushes. A clock to check on the time taken to perform each phase of the scrub procedure. Scrubbing. If a local scrub policy is displayed in the scrub room, it must be strictly adhered to. Turn the sleeves up to allow access to the elbows. Set the water temperature, allowing the water to flow for a while to let the temperature stabilise. Set the water flow fast enough to rinse, but not to splash your scrubs, as when they become wet, bacteria from the upper body will be drawn through the damp scrub material onto the outer surface. Wet the arms to the elbows. Take 5 to 10 milliliters of your chosen antiseptic lotion using your elbow to operate the dispenser. It is advisable, once selected, to continue with this lotion for the remainder of the procedure, as mixing of the lotions is not recommended by the manufacturers. Apply the lotion rapidly to the hands, forearms and elbows, ensuring all areas are covered. Remember, it is the time the lotion is in contact with the skin that is important, not how hard you rub it in. 
use the sterile scrubbing brush with antiseptic lotion applied only to clean under the nails. This should be done in a downward direction. This complete section takes approximately two minutes. Unless moving directly from one procedure to another, subsequent hand washing should follow the same pattern using the brush on each occasion as this reduces confusion and increases compliance. Rinse the arms from the fingertips to the elbows, moving the hand upwards at all times to allow the water to drain at the elbow. Manipulating the fingers and rotating the arm assists in rinsing off all the lotion. More than one pass through the water may be required, but at no time should the arm be drawn backwards, allowing dirty water to flow back towards the hand. Take another 5 to 10 mils of lotion and apply rapidly from the hands up to the elbows. Once fully covered, concentrate mainly on the wrists and hands, ensuring all web spaces, thumbs and palms are given particular attention as demonstrated. After approximately one minute, the hand and forearms are rinsed as before. For the final application, take 5 to 10 mils of lotion and apply from the hand up to the mid forearm, once again concentrating on the wrists and hands as demonstrated. This final stage should take two minutes approximately. Rinse the whole arm as before. To aid drying, allow excess water to run off from the elbows before moving to the gowning trolley. Hand drying. If the gown pack is unopened, look for the folded corners, which, when pulled systematically, allow you to open the pack without contaminating the contents. Lift up the first towel and keep it folded. If an unfolded towel is used, by the time you have reached the elbow, which is now classed as dirty, the towel will be wet and allow contamination from the elbow straight onto the palm of your clean hand. The drying is carried out by dabbing the skin, not rubbing. Rotating the arm being dried helps to dry the whole arm. Drying must be carried out only from hand to elbow. Never go in the reverse direction from elbow to hand. Ensure the hand holding the towel does not come into contact with the hand being dried. Discard the towel. Gowning. Locate the neck of the gown and apply a pincer grip with the thumb and forefinger to each side being careful not to touch the outside of the gown. 
with the remaining fingers, pick up the folded gown and move away from the trolley. While retaining the pincer grip at the neck of the gown, allow it to unfold. Do not shake the gown, as this causes turbulence resulting in debris rising from the floor which can contaminate the hands or the front of the gown. Moving your hands and arms outwards, locate the sleeves and move your hands and arms into them. Be aware of your surroundings during this procedure. An assistant will loosely tie your gown at the back, being careful not to touch the front of your gown. At no time should you allow your hands to exit the cuffed end of the sleeve. Now, fold a portion of the cuffs inwards to allow you to perform the closed gloving method. Gloving Request your preferred glove size and type, being aware that some specialties, for example, use ultra-sensitive gloves. In orthopaedics, you will probably be required to double glove. Please note, you should use gloves half a size larger than your normal size and don them first. Open the sterile packet on the sterile field and create a fold along the bottom edge to stop the pack folding in on itself. As demonstrated here, using the enclosed left hand, turn the glove onto the upward facing right hand. Open the cuff of the glove with the left hand and slide the fingertips of the right hand into the cuff. Take the double layer of glove on top of the right hand and pull this over the back of the right fist and thumb. Take the ribbed single edge of the glove and pull this down over the wrist. Pull the sleeve of the gown down from front and back of the gloved hand allowing the fingers to just emerge. Take hold of the fingertips of the glove and stretch them out to exactly align the fingers and thumb of the hand. Holding the sleeve and the gown at the wrist, pull downwards until the glove is in the correct position. Now, repeat the procedure for the left hand. Finally, to secure the gown, an assistant will adjust any loose ties at the back. The waist ties vary in position, but generally you should hold the tie that you can see is attached at the side. Straighten the piece of card prior to handing this, with its tie firmly attached, to an assistant. Turn around slowly and grasp the tie prior to pulling it from the card. It is important to develop an awareness of theatre environment. Care needs to be taken when moving in the locality of sterile trolleys and other members of the gowned theatre team. When passing, either personnel or items, always face those that are sterile with your back towards the unsterile, thus avoiding potential changes.
changing a glove during the procedure. If you need to change a glove during a procedure, an unscrubbed assistant wearing unsterile gloves should take hold of your glove and the underlying gown at the wrist, ensuring they do not touch the sleeve directly. As you move your hand backward into the sleeve, the assistant should ease the glove forward and remove it. This will leave you with your hand in the correct position to re-glove using the closed method. At the conclusion of a case, you should observe the following procedures for removal of gown and gloves. Once the ties have been undone, with your right hand hold the left shoulder of the gown and take the right shoulder of the gown with your left hand. Pull the gown forwards, making sure your gloves remain in place. Fold the gown inwards on itself, thus keeping any contaminants contained. Roll up and place in the laundry bag provided. With the right hand, take hold of the other glove just below the left thumb and pull forwards and remove. Run the fingers of the left hand below the glove of the right hand and pull the gloves inside each other. If safety glasses have been worn, remove them by the legs rather than by the front of the glasses. Remove the mask by pulling the ties at the back of the head. The mask should then be disposed of, holding it by the ties only in the correct rubbish bag. Wash your hands. If you need to apply hand cream, make sure it is non-irritant and water-based as some types of cream cover the hands with a protective layer that impedes the action of the antiseptic lotion used in the next scrub.